team. Uh, I've since been over there six or seven times. Uh, just and really, if you're an entrepreneur, Africa as a rule is a kid in the candy shop kind of place because there's never a lack of opportunities for uh, doing something that uh, can make a difference in that in that uh, uh, continent. Uh, but I went over there uh, on dual purpose, both in the ministry side, our our church is being connected with his ministry in regards to uh, predominantly agriculture, but also healthcare, and uh, have bought tractors and truck and uh, to support water business over there. Uh, as you know, water is still a big issue in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, this guy drill, has drilled over 250 wells over the years. And uh, so anyway, I've really uh, grown to enjoy uh, getting to hang out with him. Everything's a little bit unorthodox in how he does things. So it kind of sets a Westerner off. Uh, or, you know, if you're a, a tightly wound Westerner, you'd be off your rocker. As I've taken some, uh, oh, probably 30 different people over there in the last two or three years, and you get the ones who are wound pretty tight as entrepreneurs or very Western thought process, and they get... Uh, uh, I don't know. They don't handle the uh, <laughs> the unorthodox method of doing business over there very well. And so, anyway, but uh, things are still rolling along over there. We uh, I actually had an opportunity to while I was there to visit with uh, power is an enormous. Not only is water an enormous issue over there, but power is an enormous issue. And uh, so while I was there, we had a chance to visit with some entrepreneurs over there that are launching a company uh, creating LED lighting, which that doesn't sound very entrepreneurial, but uh, they had developed a light bulb that uh, charges itself off of uh, the current that comes through the, through the system. And uh, so when the power goes off, which is going to happen probably 60% of the time, then that, that light bulb will stay on for a matter of eight or 10 hours afterwards because it's been charged up by the, by the grid. And so anyway, they have some pretty uh, innovative and unique products there that uh, I'm hoping to uh, help launch here in the U S and bring over here. Uh, and uh, uh, among other projects that we worked, we worked on solar things over there. The irony being while I was there, uh, me being as Western as I am and, and, uh, the power went off uh, several times. And so uh, finally he, uh, my partner over there has a backup generator uh, that, that keeps us Westerners cool with the air conditioning. But uh, the, the motor shelled on that generator while I was there. Uh, and uh, for the first time in years, I uh, spent several nights uh, sleeping in, in sweat. And so uh, we had opportunity to, uh, uh, raise some money while I was there to rebuild the generator and just old school kind of stuff. But anyway, this guy just, he keeps moving forward uh, despite the really lack of Western support. You guys would be interested to know that most of their loans over there, he had gotten a really good deal on a loan to re to build a, a, a morgue over there. And you may say, well, what, what's the deal with the morgues? Well, these guys use, uh, funerals as a fundraising deal for families. And so they'll hold on to bodies over there for six to 12 months uh, so that people can save up money to go into a, uh, uh, to the funeral. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's seen as a, uh, a horrible deal. If you show up to a funeral and you don't bring money with you. So a lot of times these people will, uh, uh, they'll take uh they'll save these bodies for six to 12 months, like I was saying, and then they'll have everybody come in and they'll bring their money. And it's a huge fundraiser for the, uh, for the family. And so right now with the uh, coronavirus thing over there, all the funerals have been shut down. So the morgues are becoming stacked up with bodies. And so he's trying to finish a morgue over there for 300 bodies. And uh, the interesting thing is he got a great deal on this loan at 25% interest. Wow. And uh, you may say, oh, gee, that's high, and, and it is high. But over there, he, he had done another loan a few years ago at 40% interest. 
and uh, it makes you wonder how in the world can you do something like that, but they somehow have made it work. It's not very ideal, obviously, but, but I've often heard that if the, if the, uh, if the project is, is viable enough, uh, you can pay almost anything on the loan to make it happen. And so I don't necessarily agree with all that completely, but uh, this guy really, really makes things happen over there. And I'm, it's been fun hanging out with him because things happen very rapidly over there because of this guy's innovation, creativity, and that kind of thing. So uh, always have tons of opportunities to be involved over there, whether it's in solar or water or farming or um, any kind of power generation thing. So anyway, I know uh, it's uh, uh, anybody who loves looking at, at opportunities, this is a great way uh, over there in uh, Africa, there's there's tons of those opportunities where you can go over with a couple million dollars and make huge huge differences in in an entire in an entire region over there. Uh, so uh, I was scheduled to go to Israel from there to uh, visit with my main uh, partner in uh, agriculture is actually based in Israel, and uh, anyway he. Uh, that country shut down much quicker than ours did. And so uh, he, uh, I uh, spent most of my time on the road playing a travel agent and uh, booking back out of a uh, trip to Israel, back into a uh, uh, meeting over Morocco where uh, I was supposed to meet with a, a uh, wealthy uh, business lady over there. Her, her father's actually, uh, or was, he's now deceased, was, actually at one time the wealthiest guy in Africa and so I've gotten to know her over the years and she's a delightful lady and uh, um, anyway went over there to visit with her about agriculture and other uh, business endeavors uh, due to all of the uh, happenings of the COVID-19 things got disjointed along with a personal accident she had where she fell and we couldn't really visit for two or three days so Getting locked into uh, Morocco was quite an adventure. Fortunately, her family owns a chain of uh, four and five star hotels there. And so when I go over there, I live better than I normally do here in the States because she takes great care of me and puts me in these suites that I'd never stay at if I lived in the US, <laughs> if I were going to hotels. But uh, anyway, she, uh, she finally said to me, hey, uh, don't be venturing out of your room. And which was not a problem because these are really nice rooms and beautiful weather and everything, of course. And, and uh, just, just use room service, have everything brought up. And so that's the way it worked for two weeks over there. Fortunately, uh, my wife was, had, she was eager for me to get home when the, the country closed down over there. And, and that was, uh, became a little bit scary, but I wasn't done doing business. So I thought they just, uh, the, country of Morocco decided within about 36 hours to shut down uh, uh, their airports, both incoming and outgoing. And like I said, I wasn't finished with my work. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and stay here. And, and uh, my host uh, invited me to stay as long as I needed. So uh, I thought, well, I'm not really roughing it here. Now my wife was with my children being in homeschool now, but uh, anyway, we, uh, I decided to stay and, and, uh, uh, Later in that next week, we uh, uh, it became evident that this whole deal was going to blow up pretty good, and and if I wanted to get home, I better look for opportunities. So, actually, I the I was able to find a ticket that was booked uh, actually yesterday, um, but even then, there was no guarantee that thing was going to leave. And you know, plane tickets were going up about even for an economy seat were about six thousand dollars. So it was really a not a good place to be at the time. And uh, my wife uh, was a uh, long story, but she found out that through the embassy there in the consulate in Mar Morocco, that they're going to be sponsoring some evacuation flights. So, um, so she woke me up at two in the morning and sure enough, that was accurate. And I filled out a form in the next about eight hours later, I was at the airport there uh, getting ready to fly out on an evacuation flight. To, and uh, so happy to get home as Mike said about uh well, in fact, I came out of uh, quarantine yesterday. So uh, beware now. I'm whatever I might have had. I still have it, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now I'm now I'm going out in public. So anyway, but uh, uh, 
but as Mike said, we, you know, the, we're in the middle of um, uh, quite uncertain times as, as uh, everyone's distinctly aware. Uh, I, I'm a partner in several businesses. And, and so one of those is in the uh, sanitation chemical business. So that business right now is doing better than it's done in years and years. It's funny how your customers who you try to train and teach how to do things properly, they don't care. Uh, and we've got sales coming out of places that uh, where you buy your food and you're like, why in the, uh, if you knew their cleaning habits, you probably wouldn't buy from them if you know what I mean. But today everybody's into proper sanitation and things. And so that business is thriving right now. Whereas, uh, uh, we also are involved in the oil business and, and that one is, uh, in the wrong kind of tank, if you know what I mean. And so. Uh, my partners that are involved in that, we're in the process uh, through our connections in, um, we had, we're working in uh, some water business in the oil and gas industry and uh, had a guy up in Connecticut who is involved in uh, help and work with us on some, the new technology on that. But he uh, was approached by the uh, governor's office in Massachusetts and said, Hey, do you have any way of getting, PPE gear here to the states because we can't find any. And so as of uh, last week, we became uh, involved in the PPE gear acquisition mode. And so, uh, so we're now in uh, doing all kinds of uh, negotiations with the state of Texas and things like that, but uh, in, in really just using contacts that we've developed over the past several years. Uh, my main partner in this old business has done business in China for years and years and so has great contacts there. And so uh, anyway, we're, uh, that's our latest, greatest game that we're, we're working on at the moment uh, in uh, trying to take advantage of a bad situation because the oil field is, uh, we had several jobs lined up in that uh, industry before I left to go to uh, Africa. And by the time I got home, all those jobs were gone. So uh, in order to put food on the table and, and keep the wheels turning, uh, we have to adapt and be creative. And uh, so this has been uh, that kind of uh, situation. Um, anyway, I, I know we're on limited time. I'd love to invite questions or whatever, Mike. Uh, you know, we're, I obviously could talk a long time about Africa or, um, you know, even, even the stuff we're doing here in the States, but, uh, would love to entertain any questions and, and, uh, make sure I don't burn up all the time just talking here. I have a question for you. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, this is Kim Gentry. Um, I'm interested in what you are doing with, with regard to the PPEs and things like you work with things like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, as, as you guys are, are well aware, there is a lack of mask and, and really all kinds of PPE gear um, all over the country. Now, uh, people are out, and you guys have probably seen the news stories, that countries are out bidding one another for the gear. And so acquiring that has become quite an quite a issue. Uh, I have business connections in Vietnam as well as Israel and, and uh, China and uh, Vietnam, uh, for example, uh, ha are only allotting 20% of their PPE gear to leave the country. And uh, because of that, uh, if you're not part of that 20%, you're not going to get that. And so the PPE gear over there, uh, as my uh, business partner in Vietnam said, um, those were spoken for a long time ago. And so that's already been acquired. But uh, in China, which you guys have also seen the stories about having subpar um, quality, those kinds yeah. of things. So, so we've had to be very careful, but fortunately our contacts over there that we've worked with over the years are, are very well respected. And we, let's put it this way, we've been through some, some ugly times with them in the past. And uh, so this has opened up doorways to use those same contacts we had over there before to make it, uh, um, to be sure that we're not being taken advantage of and things like that. So we've, I guess what I'm saying is we're, we're on the ground. Most, the biggest thing is getting masks. 
And so, uh, you know, we're, we're putting in bids for uh, five and 10 million masks to the state of Texas. Uh, that's how the state of Massachusetts is doing it. And uh, we have, a, like I said, our partner up in Massachusetts helped them acquire. Uh, I think they've got nearly uh, 12 million masks coming in on a shipment right now. And so uh, that's kind of what we're working on at this moment. I don't do know if that have, is. Yeah, that's wonderful. Do you have, do you have access to, um, you know, the swab kits, the rapid kits, things like that, the test kits? We do not have those test kits. Uh, we, and we would be scared to, uh, I don't have, you know, out of the U S those are, I don't, I don't even know how to get those. We, we could get them in China, but we're scared of them. If you know what I okay, mean. Okay. Well, I have, there. let's, if you'll, if you'll give me a call, I'll shoot you or Mike can give you my number or something. Cause I have access to those. Okay. And they're made in the USA. Okay. And uh, my number is three, two, five, six, six, nine, zero, four, two, nine, zero, four, two, nine. And right. I'll just give you a call. We can, uh, yeah, we can, that's fine. We can talk we, later. Yeah. I just okay. wasn't sure what you were talking about. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, no, thank you. That's excellent. Okay. I love okay. it. Okay, thank love you. It. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I am curious. You said that uh, business was unorthodox in Africa and that uh, American entrepreneurs uh, – that are highly wound find it difficult. What do you mean exactly? Can you give me an example? Well, for example, uh, you may allocate money for an investment of some sort over there, and uh, chances are most of that money is going to go to what you said it's supposed to go to, uh, probably in the realm of 80 to 90 percent, but there may be 10 percent of that money may go to something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing that we have found is really that, that if we want things done our way, we have to be on the ground there, have an agent on the ground that sees things our way and understands uh, Americans want 100% of what we put over there. We want it to go exactly where we said it was to go. And, uh, uh, and most of you guys as entrepreneurs, you understand robbing from Peter to pay Paul. And, you know, if you've got money coming in in one, one area, maybe you're going to use it in another area because that's where you need it today. And that's really uh, all I'm really talking about. They're, you know, they're, they're great. Uh, and, and I don't distrust my friend over there at all. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, if, I'm, if I'm bringing money over there uh, and I want it to be used for a certain uh, quality and uh, direction, then sometimes that's a little bit mm, dicey. Does that make yeah. sense, Ron? Yeah, I guess I think it does. Let me let me interrupt for a minute. Um, uh, I got a notice that this was going to shut down in a few minutes. I'm working feverishly to upgrade it. I don't know whether it will or not. So if it we get, did. oh, it already did. Oh, I had my back turned to <laughs> Diana trying to feverishly do it, but so I guess it I already swear, looks I didn't up. Less with a thousand or Okay, so we can talk as long as we want to, so go ahead. People better talk now. <laughs> <laughs> There's money on the line now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, as long as nobody else is asking questions, I'll ask some more. Um, they have 25% interest rates. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Is that, I mean, I hear that as an American, I think that's because they have a lot of defaults. Is that why? Well, it's interesting you ask that because even uh, my friend had taken out a 40% note on this hospital that he has over there. And, uh, the problem with that was is that it's a government most the, the health care there is government subsidized well the, the government didn't pay their bills and so uh they're i think they're two hundred thousand dollars in u.s dollars today behind in their payment well then when uh, they didn't pay their bill then then uh my friend there had to def, you know he defaulted on the note and uh well it turns out last year that 82 banks in in ghana went belly up the government took a, forced them all to shut down and and uh uh i think they're vetting 
is uh, of these notes, and I think it comes back to what you're talking about. There are a lot of failures, uh, but uh, the whole financial system, I think we take our financial system way too much for granted. Uh, I know Ms. Halbert, we, you know, we want to say great, we're grateful for what happy state does. And, and, you know, I, I think we take all of this for granted. You know, they don't have loans. Over, you, you can't get a loan for a car over there. And so, if you're going to buy a car, you're going to pay cash, you're not going to get one. And so it's really a, a difficult situation for people. We take our banking for, for granted over here, but to get a 6 or 8% loan over here is absolutely astounding to them. Uh, some people have even talked about getting money from here and going over there and, and uh, uh, you know, trading the money. And it's, uh, uh, you know, again, it's, take some focus and some some knowledge of how to do that but the opportunities are pretty large over there <clears throat> but but I do yeah they do have a ton of failure uh, there's just not a lot in if they were to come to foreclose on things there's just you know the values of things over there are, are depending on where it's at if it's in one of the major cities yeah it's got high value but this uh, this place where he built is in a very remote village that is difficult to uh, to access and so anyway it's just one of those things where uh, uh, the country as a whole is very very undeveloped yet even though and I, I want to put this caveat in there while I was there they celebrated their 63rd Independence Day and uh, they got their freedom from uh, Great Britain 63 years ago without a coup or without any kind of things that ever happened like that so it's a very secure country in that sense and so uh, it frustrates me that we can't develop be, be more of a part of developing a country like that because of uh, the freedom that's offered there uh, the Chinese are there they got 700,000 Chinese living there and working because they see the opportunities these countries are very 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 um, uh, rich in in natural resources and opportunities but uh, you know, getting a Westerner there to to uh, kind of lead the way has been difficult. So the Chinese are kind of taking over, if you know what I mean. Uh, it is part what's of the, the goal. Go what's ahead, the sorry. inflation rate there? Well, it's awful, actually. Uh, yeah. th this year. Uh, that uh, has more to do with what they're the high interest rates than the defaults, I think. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, this year they went, it was nearly 25%. When I was there 18 months ago, uh, the, their currency traded four to one to ours. This year when I was there, it was five to one. And so it's uh, difficult to deal with for sure. So Brian, I am reading this book. It's called, I'm going to see if I can show you. It's called When Money, see that title right there? Yep. Uh-huh. Have you read that before? When Money Destroys I have not. Money? It's an interesting title. Well, so it's talking about how when countries print money, um, it causes hyperinflation. So, um, of course, you know, addressing our quantitative easing and some of that type of thing. But in that, have they printed <clears throat> there? Is that what's added to their inflation at all? You know, I don't know enough to speak to that, Karen. Okay. Uh, I don't know. You can, you can be sure. That's how the government's paying its bills. The problem for them is they don't have a way to tax very well over there. Most everything's done in cash. And so their GDP is less than the state of Texas uh, because most of their industry and most of the things they do over there are done in cash. And so, you know, you got all these roadside vendors and all this kind of stuff and, and uh, both on property and in uh, sales or whatever, they, they, they're horrible at being able to to collect taxes, so uh, I'm I'm sure that uh, they're having to print because they don't have any other way to, to make it work. So right, great question. I'm not an authority on on money at all, but uh, uh, it's well, I am. So <laughs> that's good. That's why I have guys like you around me, so I can uh, handle stuff like that. Right. So. <laughs> But one of the things you do do well, uh, anyway, is um, we refer affectionately to people like you as serial entrepreneurs. 
and uh, and I think it takes serial faith, if you will, to uh, I think those are almost synonymous. And so, as far as um, finding opportunities, um, as far as finding opportunities for uh, whatever comes up next, Brian, how do you go about doing that, or is it just Brian being Brian, or are you cognate? cognizant of uh, doing that in some sort of strategic way. Can you talk about that a minute? Yeah, I, uh, and again, this is all probably just theory for me, but I, I remember when I was uh, not an entrepreneur, I'm a first generation entrepreneur. So I remember when I was younger and didn't have any idea how to, I used to buy Entrepreneur Magazine at the airport. Every time I'd fly, I'm looking for opportunities that I could get involved with because that was, I had no idea how to do that. And, um, you know, I, we actually got started through this whole deal. You guys will, may laugh at it, but we got started at it through Amway. And, uh, you know, we had opportunities through that, through their B2B section of uh, developing a business that is, Really, our sanitation business started out of that. It has nothing to do with it anymore, but uh, that's how we got started. And so uh, today we have relationships with manufacturers that uh, have unique products. And I, I like finding niches that uh, other people are not touching necessarily or um, the things that, that come, a, come in, in front of me and I'm like, well, that seems like a great idea. And at some point you have to learn to trust that your mind uh, sees and, and adapts to opportunities just as well as anybody else's does. And that some of those, uh, and, and I'm a, I'm a, a Christian spiritual guy. So I, I believe that some of the ways that uh, God works is, is through ideas. And so creativity only in my book only comes from one source. And there, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one creator in the world. And so when there's a creative idea that benefits people and uh, benefits yourself, then I think those are, those are great opportunities to, to look at. And, and uh, then having other people that, that you can trust, that's why a forum like this one is so good, is that you can take concepts that may seem good to you and you can bounce them off of some other people and see if they really have legs or not. There are certain things I, I remember I was working on a private equity group in uh, DC a few years ago and working through a, um, and just visiting with people who had been doing that role a long time. And the, and the guys there would say, yeah, we will look at 200 deals before we'll fund one of them. And so, and you know, those are, those are good things to think through is that uh, as I've gotten older, some ideas uh, don't lead me to the place I want to go, so we don't pursue those. But others that that uh, help me to get to where I think that I'm that I want to go, those are things I want to go ahead and pursue. And so the thing that I've noticed from some of the people that that I know that are very successful is they're diversified. Uh, you'll have other successful people saying, "Well, you've got to focus on one thing, or else you won't ever be successful." So it's really your own. Uh, uh, kind of leading that way. But for me, I like being diversified. In fact, uh, obviously in this season, it's paying off for me because if I didn't have my sanitation company, my oil field company would leave me uh, in, in deep problems. And so, uh, so anyway, we're, um, um, but I, like I said, I've known others that are highly successful that are just focused on the one thing that they do. But even inside of that one thing, they're, they are looking to, create new uh, edges that, that bring opportunities to the company. And so, um, and, and I think ideas that come to, to you or, or maybe it's somebody else that has, um, uh, just for example, we've been uh, trying to raise uh, a pretty large sum of money on a project that, uh, um, it's not the first time I've tried to raise money on these things, but you know, 40 or $50 million and you, you start visiting with people about that and they're like, okay, well, uh, you know, that's difficult money to come up with. And, and so, and I've heard this over and over again, 
because of uh, institutional money uh, is, you know, I'll, I'll keep hearing this is institutional money may be easier to get because you're looking for two to two to five hundred million dollars. Well, uh, you say, well, I don't have anything of that scope, and you, that would be of interest to anybody. And once you start dealing with those kinds of things, you start hearing these common themes. I guess what I'm saying, Mike, is after having after working on different various projects, trying to raise money for them. You start hearing a theme that's common between all of those, and and uh, that that leads you to say, well, hey, there must must be something there that needs to be explored. <clears throat> that's what leads at least that's how I do it is, and then I run it by some of my colleagues. Hey, what do you think about this? And if uh, if we get some agreement in that, then we may say, okay, let's let's take off from that. So. Uh, you know, it's kind of even like this deal for uh, this PPE gear that we're working on right now. Uh, this is not anything we've even touched in our history, but the fact that one of our partners has done it just because out of necessity, uh, it opened up doorways for us. He said, hey, do you guys think you got to lead into something there in the state of Texas, which I did. And so uh, that's where we've been working on it, it's, you know, but uh, uh, you know, getting older like I am now, uh, we may not, uh, some of our wealth is not necessarily in a bank account, but it's in the co the contacts that we have. And so it, it's, uh, you know, not using those contacts, but they're, uh, but leveraging those that you've been friends with over the years or whatever uh, to, uh, I, I think it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. So, uh, if it's if it's a win lose situation, I don't like being involved in those because it violates my integrity. So um, it needs to be a winner for everybody involved. Otherwise, I don't want to be involved in it. Thank you. So, do you have a cadre of um, not consultants, but kind of an inner circle that you, when an opportunity seems to come up or an idea comes up? this is a go-to group and is it a consistent go-to group that you sort of go to? It's a great question. And, and honestly, yes, that's true. I, there's a, there's a group that I, I trust implicitly, uh, both with my, um, I know they're not going to squash my dreams and they're not going to stomp on those and say, gee, you're stupid or that's a stupid idea. Obviously, uh, you can't live very free that way if you've got people who who uh, who think your ideas are always stupid. So I uh, now that, but please understand, I want people that say no. I don't think I don't need yes people around me. I need people who give me honest feedback. But I also want people who are who are like minded in the sense of uh, maybe their vision for what ought to happen out of their their business. Because for me, business is not the, the the totality of it is not just making money. It is about um, perpetuating a a um, a vision and a lifestyle. And and for all you guys that are are entrepreneurs now, I wanted I told Mike this earlier today. Uh, and this is one of the, my passions about entrepreneurship is that uh, you know I believe some of the foundations of our country have have kind of eroded over the years. And one of the things that I think entrepreneurship does when it's done right is that it helps reestablish the foundation of the country. And I'll, let me explain that a little bit in the sense that, you know, in the 1400s on up, when people came on the East Coast to, to this new land, they didn't get off the ship and say, somebody give me a good job. It didn't happen. Somebody had to be in the creative mode in order to, um, to build a country and that's even my work in Ghana you've got people over there right now that they they're always looking for jobs the problem is there aren't any jobs and so the greater value there is is teaching people how to create jobs even if it's just only for themselves and so that's true here if, if a person is only creating jobs only for themselves they're part of the solution not part of the problem because the, the, the country needs people who can stand on their own and not be dependent on others all the time. And even in this crisis that we're in today, 
an entrepreneur will typically will find a way will find a way to get this into this and these and these and before you know so, so uh, I don't know if that makes sense to everybody but I find it to be foundational to the life of our country that more and more people are involved in entrepreneurship uh, and and learning to overcome the challenges uh, it's when I when we first started it was the hardest thing I'd ever done uh, and, and I'm grateful for it because, because it, it built a capacity to handle more stress and more difficulty. And one of the things that you'll see in the country, this country right now is operated out of fear. And, and people don't know how to deal with difficulty. And so uh, I believe entrepreneurs, as a rule, know how to deal with difficulty because they have to solve problems every single day. And a lot of people don't. The buck doesn't stop on their desk. And so it means a lot to me when an entrepreneur steps up, even if, even if it's just they have a job that they have created for themselves, it's hugely viable to uh, the welfare of this country and for uh, situations like this. And so when problems need to be solved, uh, a bureaucrat's not one to do it because they're not used to thinking that way, but, but business people are. And so I, I applaud each of you guys that are on here because I, it, it, uh, it goes a long way towards solving some of the problems that, that we're facing even, to, even today. Yeah, I noticed, uh, I see Matt Smith's on, and um, I guess Matt's still there, but um, I drove by, um, by his place yesterday. Oh, hello. And I saw that Matt had a sign out that said, now hiring, and uh, Burger King, the new one just down the street from him, they had a sign out, now hiring. And, you know, and, and kind of the, the political talk and everything, you're thinking, well, we got all these people out of work, but yet in the midst of that, you still have places of opportunity and people still hiring. So Matt, I, I saw you pop back up. Uh, Want to address that a little bit? Because Brian's talking about, you know, entrepreneurs provide jobs for people. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Or? Yeah, so it's it's definitely, there's a, a lot of craziness that can happen with all, all of this, but I definitely agree with what Brian's saying. There's a lot of fear going around and I mean, I, I choose to not have fear with it. It's definitely has the potential to be very tight times as a result of people losing jobs and not being able to pay their deductibles for the roof. So there may be reluctance to get projects fixed. Uh, we've kind of looked at it as this is an opportunity for us to be able to help people out significantly. For a lot of people, they've lost jobs. They don't have a way to pay for their roof. They don't even have a way to pay for groceries sometimes. So if they have damage on their roof, we may be able to help them out by getting them a loan to fix their roof, have insurance pay to replace it, and then they may have $15,000 or so that they could use for living expenses to get through some of this time and get their roof replaced. It's a, it's a little bit of a different kind of option, but uh, when you look at it like that, it's, it's something that many people don't have and kind of using the opportunity to try to help as many people as we can. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a slightly different way of looking at it. Also, we have, um, I, I don't think that hell storms are going to care that we have this uh, coronavirus going around. It's a very real possibility that we could get storms. And with that, the roofing industry being in construction is one of the essential businesses. So we, we have to be prepared to get out and help people. And Fortunately with us, we have a, a really strong name and people know who we are. So we have to be as prepared as we can be. And so a, a very real concern is right now, if a hailstorm does hit, will we be able to take care of everybody that they're going to see their emergency a lot sooner than they may have if they were at work or whatever it is, and then reaching out to us. And so we're, we're using, utilizing a lot of this technology, the Zoom and uh, remote pay and doing those kind of things to really try to uh, minimize our, our contact with people and doing remote presentations and doing a lot of that, but making it so that trying to make it seem as face to face as we possibly can. So yeah, yeah. I, I know I kind of just rambled on a little bit there, but uh, looking at it from the entrepreneurship side of things, I think that, hey, whenever we're faced with a difficult time, 
that's when a lot of people are going to make a lot of money. So uh, if you're prepared and, and kind of use this opportunity to your advantage, then uh, it, it can help you out significantly. I feel that kind of with us looking at it, um, it's many of our competitors won't be in the same spot as us because they won't, they're not used to using technology and mm -hmm. uh, we can really shine in this time. And, you know, if we show up and we use the technology and our competitors are showing up trying to shake hands still, then, I mean, who would you rather do business with whenever there's a very real chance that a person going door to door could be spreading this, spreading sickness or something. Exactly. Um, and uh, kind of, you know, very similar to what, uh, what Brian was saying, you know, believing and having faith. I'm praying that this stuff is just eradicated and that that would be the greatest thing. I think get rid of it and let, let people see that the Lord has uh, wiped this junk out, but yeah. uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it all goes and uh, we'll continue to, to do business. And I, I don't know, another thing, like just kind of, I, I rambled a whole lot just then, but something that I was, that I really loved whenever we started talking to our kids about this, to see my daughter start quoting a psalm. So thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right. You will not be touched. And I just loved hearing that. And I'm like, that's, that's so cool. And so that's kind of where we're, what we're looking at and, and going through with this is, Hey, we can, we can have, um, uh, we can be smart. We don't want to uh, use a very real situation as a, a crutch and let it turn into fear or anything, but we don't want to be stupid about it either. That's good. Yeah, I was telling, I was telling Brian earlier today, um, yesterday we went online to watch, uh, some of you are familiar with uh, Beltway Church, and it's one of the biggest churches in town, and, and uh, <clears throat> there's a uh, I, and I, I mean this in no demeaning way, but it's kind of hip, slick, and cool, you know, because what they did for the worship service is basically the same thing that they've been doing for years, but there's just no congregants in, on location, you know, and, and we watched that and listened to the sermon. It was really powerful and it was good, and we had a little time after that, so we switched over to Facebook and watched um, <clears throat> Church on the Rock Abilene, which has about 80 members. And they're on Facebook Live out in the parking lot. And the preacher, Rob Nichols, if you know him, he, he has cerebral palsy. So he's sitting in his wheelchair preaching. And when he gets all worked up, everybody's honking their horn. Amen, amen. <laughs> and they're honking their horns and so forth. So even you've got very small, you know, um, congregations or companies or people kind of going what to Matt what Matt was saying they are making those kinds of adjustments using the technology to to the level of their ability you know they're, they're not a beltway they don't have access to all that stuff but they're taking what they do have and making modifications to continue doing their mission I'm not on camera. I just think that's so cool <laughs> you know so I think the application is for small businesses as well, like what Matt was talking about. So thanks. I want to say something about what Matt said is, is you know, one of the things that he talked about was his customers don't always know how to solve their own problems. So one of the great things about entrepreneurs is, is that if you are creative and flexible, and I think flexibility is one of the great keys to entrepreneurship and in, in becoming successful. And it, it's teaching people how to think through their problem, maybe through a different angle than what they have thought through. And, and uh, sometimes that's what our job is, is helping people. Uh, we were just talking about that with the state of Texas. We're working with a bunch of bureaucrats who probably don't have experience doing the things that they're doing. Uh, we know this happened. Our, our partner up in Massachusetts was uh, telling us this with the, uh, the state uh, leaders in New York that they're, you know, probably uh, I need to be careful how I say that, but they, they're talking about how these people don't have a clue what they're doing. And so the, the need is, is that people that, that know how to navigate their way through difficult times are um, kind of involved in the game so that they can um, teach them how to think through things uh, that may not work exactly the way that, that they want it to. Uh, but there are ways to get through it. But, 
you, you have to um, involve them in, in, in a process. And I think we as entrepreneurs typically have, if we've, if we've been successful, we've had to navigate through difficulty and, uh, and not just once, but typically several times a week. And, uh, and you're used to dealing with things that don't go quite right. So anyway, I, uh, it, it's good because we, we become consultants uh, to people along the way and helping them to, to uh, find solutions to the issues that they're dealing with. Yep, good call. Any other questions or comments? Well, we've gone uh, not quite an hour, but. Hey, I wanted to say one thing for you, Mike. Yeah, sure. I really like this format. <laughs> and I know I've missed the last couple of weeks. I've had interesting issues the last few weeks, but I have wanted to do it this way, and this is wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. We, uh, we are attempting, since we're attempting to meet on every Monday, you know, like what we ha have typically as a lunch, but, um, and I'll continue sending those, those out. I think it's been great having Brian today and focused uh, on, on a particular topic. And maybe that's the way to go, you know, uh, trying to uh, pick uh, somebody. Uh, I know not everybody's as popular as Brian is, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's been a delight seeing uh, so many of you um, online that uh, it's just neat to stay in contact somehow because you guys are my group, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't belong to all these other groups in town and stuff. And so, and plus being in a kind of a retirement phase, it's, it's really important. The relationships to Linda and I for you, with you guys are really important to us. Thank you for taking the time. So, well, thank y'all for having me on. I appreciate the, it's an honor to hang out with folks who are hanging it out there every day. And, uh, Putting, putting it on the line and it's uh, uh, I think it's adding to the value of our country and making it better just uh, not not to overstate it but I really do believe that very good well thank you hey, I just want to say hi real quick it's been oh. about three it's been about three years since I've been able to come to one of these because I work out of town so I'm excited to see your face Mike and Linda and to be a part of this again well where's your face Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on. There she is. Hey. Okay. What? Well, because I thought, well, because it didn't give the last name. I thought, was well, that my Ashley or is that another Ashley? <laughs> so, so good to see. You. Are you out at Baird or? Yeah, yeah. We're we're still open and operating, and so okay. I'm actually in my office right good. now. That's good for y'all. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. When people's names just show up, we know that they're shy or whatever, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, it's great seeing you again, Matt, and, and everybody yeah. else. So, Charlie, good to see Charlie. Randy and, and Rochelle, uh, hello. <laughs> yeah, so thank you guys. And I guess I'll go ahead and end the meeting. And Hello, Linda. Oh, there. Yeah. There they are. There okay. she is. There. Hi, Rochelle. How are all of your children? Thank you. Have it on. They are good. Busy. Oh. Great. Well, that's good. Some people are popping on here. There's Tim. I haven't seen Tim Prosser in a long time. Hi. Hey, Tim. And uh, I just curious, uh, Rochelle had started the, um, what did you call it? The Abilene uh, Food. The Abilene Food Tour. Food yes. Tour. So I guess that's probably i'm just guessing what the status is on something like that is kind of yeah it's canceled all my restaurants are only doing takeout right now yeah so what about your other business is that still going risky friday that's risky friday yeah it's still going, well. going. it's doing good so well, i bet once yeah, still it's growing. over that your abilene food tour is going to be popular everybody's going to be excited to get out of their houses <laughs> yeah eventually yeah yeah i keep getting followers on instagram so that's good very cool okay all righty tim you have anything to say no good to be back 
I got laid off last Wednesday and started a uh, new job on Wednesday. So. Oh, so that's why you could join us today. That's why I can join you today. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. Very good, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. Anna, good seeing you, Karen, everybody. So I guess I'll end the meeting because we could just talk for a long time probably. But uh, uh, Brian, thank you again for everything. And um, Pleasure. Thanks for the thank invite. You. We'll be in touch. Hey, Mike, before you, before you end it, I just wanted to let everybody know a cool thing that I found uh, in the app. <laughs> you see how I'm now at the, at the beach. You can go That's great. down by the video. You can, you can simply set it to a set virtual background, and there's all kinds of different backgrounds. You can even set it to be um, – you, you can set it to have uh, your own picture or, or whatever. So, um just uh, we, we had fun with it the other day and found that like kind of messing around and when you have a big meeting with <laughs> sitting there looking at someone at the beach sometimes can be more fun than that someone sitting in their living room. So makes me want to go to Alabama and see my brother. It's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> oh, that's that's cool. Well, I guess it beats love it, Matt. Up, beats standing <laughs> up on a roof, you know. Boy, that's the truth. <laughs> In the heat. Yes, so I, I had that picture of the, of the roof the other day, but I figured that uh, y'all would enjoy the beach a little bit more. We do. Yeah. We do. Too much fun. All right, guys. Well, we'll uh, we'll be in touch with you over uh, email and cyber state space or whatever. So thanks for thanks for coming. Bye. I can do space too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye, <laughs> thanks. Bye y'all. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, all. Uh, sorry, thanks. That is too funny.